I'm really glad. I'm glad mm -hmm. that you're holding that uh, symposium. Well, let's go back to the highway sure. modernization plan mm -hmm. and just say, what what can we do? I mean, we're now set where we have a big drop in the OMPO budget in the mm -hmm. portion that goes for transportation yeah. projects because of rail dragging off some dragging of the money. Dragging some of the money, yeah. And so what are, what are we going to do? I mean, we're going from bad to worse? Yeah, we're going from bad to worse. I mean, for the short term, I do not have optimistic news. Um, the DOT has a good plans, specific plans, for example, for addressing the Middle Street merge. Mm -hmm. uh, this is something that I worked with them throughout the 90s and we completed the work in 2004. So there is an addition of a through lane that goes from the Middle Street merge all the way to Vineyard Boulevard. Mm -hmm. But it costs real money. So I don't know how they will be able to get uh, I remember that the budget is somewhere between 80 or 100 million to do the project mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. it has a lot of underpasses and you know some uh, some realignment of lanes. So it's it's not a very inexpensive project. In bottom line is that you cannot add capacity and solve congestion problems with uh, very little money. You need a few million, right. and you know the budget is not there to support that. Well, and the thing that's so sad about that, these are shovel-ready projects that we could really. Put they the are. money working in the they economy are. right away. I mean, I, I'm sure that the DOTs, uh, the local DOTs, the state DOT is doing a good job in prioritizing this mm -hmm. project. Some of them they can't afford. The problem is that they, with the modernization plan, we can make a lot of good within five to ten years. Mm -hmm. If we wait with the money to trickle in, we can we will take twenty to thirty years to implement the same package of solutions. By then, we're falling behind in the quality of our roads. So that's why the bill, and that's why Director Morioka went and said that if we go with the status quo, we'll never catch up. Right. This bill it was for catch up and do some good. And as I said in the beginning, my only disagreement is that it didn't go far enough. Right. But it was a heck of a good find foundation. And now we missed the foundation and we're back to the very bare minimum. Oh, and Panos, that's going to uh, that's going to affect our not just the motorists and the people that use the transportation systems, but what what it affects is safety too. It can and affect that really safety. concerns me. Yes, that when you can't go and make the repairs to the bridges that we have, when you can't go right. and do a regular inspection um, project and then right. do whatever is necessary. I mean, that's that's frightening for people. You are very correct. And in fact, if we have a modest earthquake and if a bridge is deficient and it so happens that at that moment, because of some project like in Minnesota, it is overloaded, bad right. news. Right. Bad right. news. So it is, uh, I mean, the, some bridges really need strengthening and some retrofitting. So well, and, and the solutions are in the bag. Yeah. We have them. The design is there. The and only we, thing is procurement and money to, you know. And I think the people, get them the people deserve a better explanation than just it died in conference committee. That to me, that um, that really, I was quoted in um, the Honolulu Weekly today mm -hmm. with my saying what I felt was wrong with the legislature, and I, it was that the committee chairs in this legislature are given absolute power to decide what's going to move and what isn't going to move. And they don't have to give any explanation to the right. public. And to me, that's like a, a mini dictatorship within this building. And I think it's just flatly wrong. It's well, not transparent. Uh, people work very hard to get something mm -hmm. through, and then it dies with no explanation from right. that committee chair right. that just for reasons that he or sometimes she have individually the personal disagreement, and, yes. and, and just won't yeah. express out in the public. Actually, this is the story of uh, my effort with a lot of other folks to uh, push a public-private partnership bill for highway projects. Right. But any successful PPP bill also has a designation of the ability, not the necessity, but of the ability to establish tolls. Because the private, mm -hmm. the private sector, if they want to build you something, a new bridge, mm -hmm. then they say, okay, part of it you're going to finance it with public funds direct, some federal funds, but there is a balance there. The mm -hmm. balance is to be paid by the motorist in the, t in the, in the form of tolls. And then the, that the only goes se until it's paid off and exactly. then it's gone. Exactly. No so more tolls. They have a concession. Okay. Some of them as short as 15 years. 
typically 20 to 30 years, mm -hmm. and after that the project reverts to the public, and the project to begin with is always public domain. I mean, the I new see. bridge would belong to the Hawaii state government, but I, if I build it, would have a concession for 30 years. Mm -hmm. At the end of 30 years, my company will say, well, that was the agreement, that was the toll schedule, we collected, we made money, or we didn't, but at 30 years, we give up. And you know, all these agreements internationally, they work very well. Oh, I've, I've it's driven, a win-win yes. situation. I've I mean, driven on um, those roads in, in Colorado, mm -hmm. and it's fast, they are wonderful. Spectacular. They're wonderful roads, yeah. and they're not crowded. They're they are not, not crowded. Clogged. And the one characteristic in, in our conference, people will say that, is that when you have a private company managing a specific roadway or a bridge, mm -hmm. they just treat the motorists or even the bus company that you, as a customer. So you, well, yes. you get different service. <laughs> yes. so, so the toll paying public, you get similar service as from your cell phone companies. It's not always perfect, but at least you have a discussion. You can dispute a bill. It's not like with government, you know, that it's almost government is infallible and you can do very little <laughs> about it. It's with a private entity and you can always, you know, uh, negotiate a condition. Well, if there I'll, is an I'll issue. tell you one thing I've always wanted to have happen, and I keep talking to people in the transportation sector. Mm -hmm. I would love to see the road, the freeway that goes by University of Hawaii, mm -hmm. have it be underground and then have the surface area be available to offset the cost of undergrounding the freeway and have the surface area available rides. for development. Mm -hmm. And in that way, yeah. you have your community and your university that is um, an integral part. It's not separated by a freeway. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it just made so much sense to me. You'll see this in other areas, too, where oh, yes, people have really made that decision, and then they've made the money um, for doing it from the, what they do yeah. from the land above. That the created. most recent one is Seattle. Ah. The current governor, the mayor of Seattle, agreed uh, that uh, the promenade they had, they're going to demolish it and be, uh, replace it by uh, a tunnel. So all the, the front of uh, Seattle is going to look much more attractive than it does oh, yes. now. And of course, Boston did that very expensively with a big dig. Uh, <laughs> that's a big dig is almost a big joke because it started at right. $3 billion and it went to $15 billion. But that's a truly massive project of multiple freeways, mm -hmm. bridges, and realignments and all. But... Bottom line is that uh, Boston is three times more beautiful, so there is yes. sometimes, you know, a price for beauty.